पहले हम तो रुक गिरा डाल डाल Hi, I'm Girish. I work for Bagit, uh, Mumbai. I take care of the store design and projects. Okay, what sort of 
Just one question, just so I've got it. Who are retailers here? Put your hand, retailers. Okay, so the majority are retailers, child, I just for profit. Okay, well, I'm going to talk to you about store design and uh, packaging. Um, and probably one of the most important eras in retailing, as far as I'm concerned. I've been 50 years in retailing, and what is happening today is dramatic and it's going to change the whole face of retail. But before I do that, let me just tell you a little bit about my background. As you can see by my hair, I've spent a lot of time in retailing, 50 years in retailing. And in that time, I managed the number one store in the UK with Sainsbury's, their new hypermarket saver center. I was at the Home Depot, in America, there was opening a store every 44 hours, and I was the president for California, Colorado, and Texas for the design center. Today, and then I also managed a home center company in Germany that became one of the world's best recognized stores for 17 years. And through that, I, became, I then went to the, the Home Depot. And for the last 10 years, I've been an association person managing uh, the Edinburgh, which I'll tell you about in a moment. And I travel no less than 30 times a year. Two weeks ago, I was in China. Last week, I was in Spain. Today, I'm in India. Then I'm going to Rome. So every week, I'm going to see home centers, but not only home centers, not only my members, but looking into all the new concepts of what I've seen and, and, and just to see what is happening in the retailing world. So really, you'll speak your addressing you today is not a person who's used to really giving master classes in the detail, but somebody who can share many years of experience. And I contacted two companies in London who I know very well, and they gave me some wonderful photographs and wonderful pictures uh, um, of new concepts, which I think is where the world is going, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. So I liked Ken's words, what he said a little while ago. I think he said that pictures is worth a thousand words and experience is worth a million. So I, I feel quite comfortable on that. But let me just share my experiences because design and packaging is just not design and packaging. It is the whole philosophy of your whole company which is embedded in what you do. So you can't see store design or packaging just in pure isolation. It has got to fit in with all the rest of the things you're doing and the whole philosophy uh, of the store. But let me just share you my experiences of the 50 years, first of all. Why are some retailers' companies so successful and others not? It has always fascinated me in 50 years. When I started retailing at 14 in York, we had the best small store in York. It was not self-service, it was counter-service. And why? Because we had a very passionate manager who really looked after the customers, who gave us as employees a lot of respect. And by far, we were taking more money per sales, per square, than anybody else, because everybody liked to come to our shop because they felt comfortable. So this has fascinated me all my life. IKEA, immensely, he's going to talk tomorrow, but IKEA, an, an unbelievable, the number one retailer in the world making good design furniture affordable for people who in the past couldn't afford it. And then a psychological way of design, and people have copied it. They've copied it, but they haven't really hit it. There is only one IKEA in the world, and by far the most successful. There is a company in France called Brico Depot. It was started by a man who took over small stores that weren't working. 
And this Brico Depot is absolutely magnificent in the design and the way in everything that it's doing. So why is that? And then another company with a lot of money, the number two in, the, in, in Europe, Group Adio, copied it called Brico Man. But it doesn't have the same buzz. It doesn't have the same feel. It has got the same fixtures. So really, when we're talking about design, when we're talking about packaging, we're also talking about uh, why are some successful and others not. So I was with the Home Depot. It's taking more money per square meter than Lowe's. And Lowe's have got 50,000, sorry, they've got 300,000 people and 50 billion sales. And Home Depot have got 70 billion sales. But they're getting more sales per square meter. They're getting more sales per, per, per employee. The people don't change as much as the other people. They're getting more stock turn. Why? Why is one company so unbelievably successful and the other company not so successful? So that is, I said, what really has fascinated me about my background. Ah, what's happening here? Somebody help me. Go back one, that's it, and then just here. <coughs> the other thing that I realize, and it's, you, it's still got a part to do with what we're talking about, that um, the difference in performance for people who are motivated and who are not is enormous in a retail company. It is much more than 100%. If you've got 50 people who are motivated and doing their job, it is better than 100 people who are not. This, I, I'm absolutely convinced, it's been analyzed and people have said it's true. And so this is an area where I think in retailing generally over the years, in my experience, uh, where the employees, to give them respect, to give them knowledge, to give them freedom to decide, it is an enormous capital in a company. What's it got to do with design? You'll see that when we come a little bit later. But this is an area where I think even as designers or people as I saw, never let it go because you're going to be judged in the end of what you've done and what you've designed, whether it's successful or not. So if you haven't got that confident right, you can have the best store in the world, and if the philosophy is not right, you will not be successful. And the other thing which in my 50 years is the abuse of power. And I say this wherever I go, and I've, I'm very fortunate enough to hold talks like this in a lot of places, but I always tell people like yourself, managers, abuse of power. People, I have seen that people in management, and all of you here are in a, a very privileged position. You've had a good education, you're working for a good company, you've got a good job, you can come here, you can listen to what's going on, but there are a lot of people less fortunate to yourself who are dependent on you, really dependent, and I have seen such atrocities of disrespect for people. So this is something that's really ingrained on me, and I never miss a chance to say that when you're in a position of power, please make sure that when you're dealing with people that you really treat them with respect, and I think then you'll get the, the, the results that you want. What's it got to do with design? I think it's got to do with the whole philosophy. And design is a, a very, very important part. Very briefly, I won't bore you with this. This is the end of where I am today. It's for all the home centers globally. So people in Australia, in South America, in Canada, in America, in China, in, in, uh, all over the world uh, are in our organization. We are doing networking. So I've got contact and every, possibly every CEO uh, worldwide in the home center business if it's any sort of size. We do store visits, I do regular, we have study tours. Communication, we have meetings of course. Uh, I thought we had a good website that I heard today and I'm going to improve that immediately when I get back and uh, put a YouTube video on it. Uh, uh, and lobbying is because we're in the European market. So thank you Ellen for that. That's sure. something else. You know, you, when you go to a seminar like this, you can always learn. If you learn one thing, you take one thing back, you're one stage further. I met a man who was immensely popular, uh, immensely successful, the founder of Home Depot. They threw him out of a job in 1978. He had nothing to do, and he, today he was then worth five or six billion dollars. 
Yeah? And you always said, I always worked that little bit more than anybody else. I always was eager to learn and to listen. And he wasn't a genius, he was a man of very much common sense. So these are the home centers, 92 home centers worldwide, a part of our organization. We operate in 51 countries, and we have the pleasure of going to every single one of them. We've got a very top board of people, of uh, the, the number two in Europe, the number one in Europe, number one in Ireland, number one in Austria, the number one in Germany, the number two in, in uh, uh, Norway, Lovenskov, and a large company in Russia. These are our board. This is the sales of our business. Doesn't interest you a lot, but there we are, nearly 400 billion. Uh, why I'm showing you this here, North America has 60% of the retail business in our business. But this also reflects generally the whole of the retail world generally. So look at the size of America. It is absolutely enormous. Uh, Africa and Middle East still very, very small. Asia of course is growing and South America and Europe is very large. So really, the other countries like Africa, Asia and South America are all developing companies. And this again shows you the, here, Asia for example, 62% of the world population, 4.8% of retail. Wow, I wish I was in India today. The growth possibilities are absolutely amazing. No longer in America and Europe because of also other markets are coming through. I only show that to reflect. What is this DA market? Oh, sorry, home improvement. Uh, you don't have it. You know Home Center? It's like Home Center. Home improvement is DIY in Europe. It's here in India. You call it more do it for me. So in Germany, people go and buy wood and they lay their floors. They buy paint, they paint it, they buy wallpaper. They, they build things in their garden themselves. They don't get anybody to do it for them. This is called home improvement DIY. Uh, also home accessories as well. So this is a, a very enormous big market for people who buy things either than do it themselves or they buy bathrooms. Actually, the signature is do it yourself. Do it yourself. OK? You got it? So if you buy tiles, from me and lay them down, you do it yourself. Yeah. Well, you're a rich bloke, you get people to do it for you, but other people don't. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Are you happy about that? Not quite. So I'll talk to you afterwards. Yeah, I'll give you a brochure of mine, then you can go. Yeah. Yes, the new rules of retailing, I call it. The, the dramatic change of what is happening is going to affect design, and I'm very privileged to have a few excellent examples of this today. Uh, and multi-channel, and I, I was listening to Ellen this morning and, uh, uh, about all the, what is happening in multi-channel, in social networks, and everything else. And this is changing the world. What is happening in Europe today is that stationary sales are going down or staying stationary and the online sales are going up or the multi-channel sales are going up. And they're going up about 20% a year. And they reckon, the experts, there's a Deloitte, I've got a thing um, which I can give to you from Deloitte about where the market is going. If anybody wants it, I can give you a card afterwards and I'll send it to you. And it's very interesting that uh, 65% in future will only be done by stationary stores and 35% will be done by the other stores. So you've got to really think today about how your stores are going to look. Because your stores are not going to be like they used to be. Stores are going to be in the future still, the survey said about 70% really, or 69% really believe that the retailing store is the store of the future still. But 30 to 35 percent not. People will be going online, people will be going in stores, people will be uh, having multi channel. And when you look at the new modern stores today, you can't go in without seeing some form of communication, whether they've got iPads or whether they've got computers or whether they've got knowledge and everything else. 
So this is one area that is changing dramatically because of e-commerce. The other change that is happening as well, or the other thing to look at, is that because of the internet, because of the e-commerce, people in the future, the employees, are going to be, have to be much more trained and skilled than they are today. Now, my wife had a little funny little mouse going in the garden, and it was making a mess of the lawn, and she didn't know what to do. When she goes in the future, now, she had me, so I went on the computer and looked at, I looked at all the Googles and everything else and found out what I did with this little mouse and now I know how to put peanut butter on it, it'll come and we'll get it, yeah? But, in the future, if you've got a problem which is more complicated than what I've said, you will go to a store and you'll meet a, young, you'll meet a person who will then, if he doesn't know the answer, within a minute he's going to show you on the screen and he's going to explain to you everything about it. So, I think that is a change in the future, that, that, that employees are going to have to be much more trained and again, even if you're in store design, you're part of a management team, make sure that you are investing in people, uh, in knowledge and making them better today than they were yesterday. So a dramatic change, I can't explain it enough that the stationary store of yesterday uh, uh, is no longer going to be there. Now I've come to a dead stop. There you are, you see, this is, that's the age gap, yeah? That's the age gap, yeah? yeah? She could be my daughter, so... Um, what I'm going to show you now, and then we, we can talk, and I'm going to go through it slowly, is that there is a, a design company in England that we've worked for, which is called 2020, and they give me, a, they give me their thoughts and their ideas and their presentation on the stores, and these are some very fine examples uh, of what they're doing. Um, so, when it comes to store design, the real thing is start with the cus customer. Now, this may seem very basic, but really, are you really satisfying those customers' needs? When they come into your store, are their thoughts or their dreams, if you like, do you meet or do you extend their expectations? I think this is very important that you very much, and we heard it today, uh, Ken was mentioning in his last session, really listen very, very carefully to the customers and try to anticipate the customer's needs uh, uh, and what they want. This is very, very important. And there's a lot of areas today, and Ellen spoke about that today, on, on the social network and all the other things. So start straight away, it's just symbolic <coughs> that one here, start just with the customer um, and what he wants and what he expects. And the customer is changing rapidly, very rapidly over the years. I started in uh, the counter service, self service, and now it's internet and more. And I have a son, and he spends much more time on the internet and buys a lot more on the internet. So try to find out, uh, and also the social networks that you can't have to divide yourself in two, but I had a very, although I was only there a short time from Ellen today, about how very important the social networks are and using them in your business to your advantage. So listen very, very, very careful to your customers. This is just a um, thing that they gave me here about the mission, the brow, and I won't go into all that really. Uh, you'll get that on the presentation. Um, I'd much prefer to talk to you about the practical things. So here's one thing I heard somebody from Paint, just as a, a customer, uh, this is what the, in the presentation. Other customers are expecting it like here, paint by color? Or are they expecting it by paint by brand? It's very important really because you can have two stores and this has been tested. You can have one store with brands and one store with colors. And then you look at the sales figures and it's amazing, it's amazing how much you're getting more out of paint sales in one 
a new eye on another. Yeah. So um, now, personally, I think that paint by brand is better because people are still, when it comes to paint, they like a brand. Yeah. So they're having to shoot along to find the right colour before they find their juleps and everything else. But it depends on how strong, of course, the brand is. Uh, so really, from that point of view, really knowing the customer. And the brand, I think today, and the opportunities for a brand is so, so immense to create, and I'm going to show you examples of your retailing as a brand. Don't be the same as anybody else. Be different and try to really establish a strong brand. We talked a moment ago about IKEA. There are many, many famous examples about brand. And the brand is what are you, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to establish within your brand? What mission have you got? Because unless you have the mission, you can't start really designing a store unless you're really clear by management, by the whole philosophy of what you want to do. So Walmart, for example, offers a wide choice and an unbeatable price. So everywhere you go in a Walmart store, price is screaming at you. But of course, Walmart is a a design, uh, sorry, Walmart is a, a company with high volume and low margin. So it is going to be different to a Burberry or something else, which we'll, we'll show you in a minute. So celebrate, celebrate what you want to be famous for. Where is your difference? What you are selling to your competitors? Where is your added value? If you've got any questions while I'm talking, please interrupt me because I'd be delighted to, to say. And you know, coming back, and I'm going to sidetrack a bit now and again, because I think this is very important. All retailing is emotion. And all the retailing concepts in the world I've seen, we've talked about IKEA. The owner of IKEA walks through the stores, he talks to the people, he looks at merchandise, he's the most normal man you have ever seen. But he's extremely passionate. And because of that, he he infects everybody to be, they've got their own sort of culture. The same with the Home Depot. I had two vice presidents working for me. They said, John, we would stand in front of a train for Bernie and Arthur, the founders. I'm sure they'd jump out of the way when it came. But the thought that this is there, that this is very, very important. So the brand, we all had orange blood. I'm sure if I took my finger, orange blood would come out because I worked for the Home Depot. And this was, this orange culture was in everything within the store and also within the, the design of the store. There is a UK Pets at Home. This is showing you again a design. They want to really care about the pets. And this is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, <coughs> look on YouTube and look at Pets at Home. And look at yeah, just look at one of those videos and you'll see some absolutely superb store layouts and, and what they're doing also with people and also with their, with their um, uh, computers. And one person owns the dog section. One person owns the other section. So looking into the store, ah, here, let's go here to Apple. I mean, this is the finest example. I've talked about IKEA, but uh, again, Ken mentioned that today. It is just unbelievably successful. The store design, the, the whole part of it is magnificent. They've really, I mean, obviously, the today's number one world company. I don't have to say too much about it. But the whole philosophy of what they're doing, look at Hewlett Packard, look at all the others, Dell, look at all the other people. Look at uh, uh, Nokia, all going down and down, and look at Apple, because it's idea, it is creative, and it is marketing. And look at their store, of the, their design of their store. It's just unbelievable. But before that, I think we've got some uh, pets at home of design. So really, this area of the way they've designed it, they've got little worlds of going around the store of worlds of pets at home. I think we've got another one here. 
Um, yeah. So these are, this is a, 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 an immensely successful store. It is far better than any other store in the UK. There are 300 and, it, and it's miles ahead because of the way its philosophy and the way of they, they have designed the store for the, the customer. An area for reptiles, so all the children can go in and have a look at it. And the, you know, um, and sometimes retailers tend to say, "What sort of area am I getting per square foot?" I don't believe that anymore. The most successful stores I've seen from sales per square meter are the, air, the, the where they're selling the area where you've got a lot of space. Now, in this sort of area in design. When I was with my company for 17 years, we built a zoo. We called it a zoo. It was a pet. And my accountant came up to me and he said, John, prove to me how effective it's going to be. Prove that we're going to get money from return from this area. And I'd never had so much stupidity in all my life from my point of view. Because this was an attraction where all the children came in. This is where everybody looked at. I was managing the largest store in the UK in 1977 called Saber Center. We had the biggest delicatessen as a design. We had about 30 people working in just this delicatessen island. We were getting frogs' legs, but we didn't talk about it today. And we were throwing them away because people in the North England didn't know you could eat them. But they all talked about frogs' legs. So what I'm thinking, this is a feature that we put into our store and the store I work for is Canalva, and anybody can make a note, look at the internet. We had the highest sales per square meter in Germany, and we were highly priced, we were not a discounter. But it was a shopping experience, and we had an enormous amount of traffic coming to our stores every day, because we put things uh, more attractive. So you cannot, when you're talking about store design, um, always measure the people of the accountant. Uh, and say, how much am I going to get from that design or the other? You must see the store in its totality. As I say, there are two types of stores. There's the one store, which is the discount, no frill, the Aldi's, and, and uh, you don't know Aldi, do you? No, it's a discount, an immensely successful. Do you have Aldi here? No, yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, no frills, but enormously successful. The design of the store is perfect for what they're doing for the message. There is zero emotion, there is zero service, but it's price, price, price. But here, with this store, Pets at Home, very successful, that they're also combining emotion, that people want to go to this store. And this is going to happen more in the future. They go, want to go to this store for the experience. Before you went to buy, I think today and tomorrow you also want to go to experience. The sameness, the dullness of many shops that I've seen in Europe will not exist in the future unless they really start to cater for the experience. Otherwise, I can just go on the internet. So when I go into a store for tomorrow, it has got to have a certain amount of wow effect. It's got to be something that I really, even Aldi has got a, a wow effect because it's so cheap and the goods are stacked so high and people buy so much and they know and this is something they blindly know, again, of retailing, that when you pick up an item, that the price is right. That was the same with the home. Still got something to do with design, it's all part of it. Uh, the home depot, everyday low prices. People close their eyes and they're blind to know that when I buy that item, I know that the price is right. So here again, different philosophies. So if you're doing design, depending on what sort of business you're in, Paint business. I've seen some elaborate paint. When you walk in, you see the most wonderful paint area, and you've got areas where they mix the paints. There's people there, and I'm Joe. I, and, but you get the feeling there's a lot of authority there. Uh, and it takes up a lot of room. But that doesn't matter as long as you've got the store space to bring up. So don't think that in store design, to get more sales, you've got to clutter everything up. Apple, of course, are the the finest example of, uh, of that anyway. 
Here's just another feature, the park, so it's got a sitting area. Again, the sitting area uh, is becoming normal. In my company, we had a 12,000, 120,000. Do you say meters or feet here? Feet. Feet. 120,000 square feet. And we had uh, the zoo, I told you about. But we also had an area for children. And we also, when the children came in, they got a little tag, there were people looking after them. And the accountant again started saying, well, John, tell me, uh, it's very costly to have it. But think of the store again, when you're doing your designs or when you're doing anything or packaging, think of everything in its totality, because this was an area that was well used and uh, don't just look at selling space today and tomorrow just for selling, look for the experience. Because what sells your business is your customer traffic and your average purchase. Uh, excuse me, John? Yes. I just say something? I just doesn't necessarily have to do with the with the, uh, the retail design, but obviously I was just reading recently now that Walmart is coming into to India. Yeah. Now the SMEs or the small businesses obviously will probably have to even you know spend even more time on their design to, to keep up with the competition. Do you have a you know? Yeah. Um, I'm just curious of to to your uh, to thought about that. I don't know if you knew or not. But yes, I knew. And, uh, there, there are certain things uh, where people get worried that Walmart are going to come in and crush them. Mm. Um, and uh, they have done that. But my opinion and my experience of retailing is that if your store is so special, if you're a small storekeeper, you know your customers, you know your people, you have your warmth, you have your trust over many, many years. And I, I just don't go away from your own values, I think. Um, I was only, I was, my store in, in Germany was Knelda. The owner was a very passionate lady and I got on with her very, very well and I was the CEO. Um, and all the big boys came in, all the Bauhaus, with the, all these were big, and we still flourished and because we were different and we were different. So don't try to copy them. They get them on price, but there are other areas that they can't get them on. So don't be too frightened of price. I know many local heroes who've survived by the very nature of their stores when somebody like Walmart comes in. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, a very good point. So just make your, sales, make your stores uh, attractive. Now, this is the finest example of store design for me. I mean, look at that. That is magnificent. It's, it came to England. It was in America, but I think they even did it better here. But this is the way the store design, but look at this, the way they did it. So it's also coming on Ken's point about merchandising as well. But the store design to put it like that, to get everything there. And when you see that store, it is a wow. You need a wow. If you're all small, well, you, I, I think everybody, unless you're an Aldi, unless you're in discount, you need in your stores. And I'm gonna show you some fine examples of wow designs. And this really whole food market has really dominated. This is a category killer in the area. If you want to have visitors and you want to have a lovely something in foods, you would go to Whole Foods because you know, and because of the design and the way it is, uh, 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 and everything, the whole fixtures, the whole fittings is based to volume. Uh, and that is quite normal. When you go there at six o'clock in the morning, you see the people all working very hard away. This again is uh, celebrating the brand, the brand of Whole Foods. Again, just a magnificent display. And you know, even the slightest bruised tomato or throw it away, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Blind, you've got to go into your store blind to buy that sort of merchandise. But the way that this has been, uh, obviously, when you're talking about this sort of store, you need the wide aisles, you need the space, you need the the whole store has got to be, uh, the whole design of the store, the way it is with the wood and everything, goes, meets that sort of fruit and it makes it a, a very, very, very nice atmosphere. So, you know, this is a, a very, very uh, good thing to look at. Here again is a, another example. Celebrate what you want to be famous for. So they're celebrating whole foods and they've really, uh, again, in their design of their stores, the flooring, you know, the, the colors, the flooring and everything else. 
that's so very, very, very important. Morrison's is here, another store. Again, very different. I mean, all the others are big boxes, and then they, they put their design of a, didn't cost the world, you know. Didn't cost the world. But look at the way it stands out to the normal stores, in the UK anyway, probably in, in India maybe different, but this, I think, the way they design this store, and they want to be known for fresh food, so again, the designers, the way the designers are, what is the strength? And going in, the first thing you see when you're in Morrison's today, <coughs> wow. Now this is a, yeah, and I'm in Germany, we're miles behind this sort of market, uh, store planning and, and the way it is. So look at the way they plan that store. So no matter what business you're in, try to be different, try to think about how you can create a much more shopping atmosphere. Again, you've got the two choices, you've got the home to sit on your computer, or you've got the choice of going to this wonderful store, uh, uh, the wonderful design store, light, bright, clean, ticketing, everything about the store in the design, I think has been very, very good. And so again, Sainsbury's, where I was, was by far the number one in Europe. Today it's about the number three, because people have come up with new ideas, new, new formats, new things, so it's changing all the time, and now Morrison's was a local hero in the north of England and is now coming because it's really doing a splendid job of attracting the customers. And that's the main thing is the, any, anything we do is only based on, on figures in the end of what the customers are accepting. Here again, just the, also the exotics, uh, again from the design. So even, you know, even every little detail of the store design and planning has been there. But these are putting in baskets because it gives it the mark atmosphere and everything else. Uh, for those people in clothing, I've got some superb other examples uh, of what we're doing. So, uh, yeah. And it's screaming out what they're doing every day as it, it is fresh. So, turn your business strategy into an emotional proposition. I think this is a, a, a very important, which I've been mentioning one or two times. Um, and that was what we saw at Morrison's. It's emotional that when you go in a store, you say, wow. And I've seen more in the last two years of this development in Europe than I've seen anywhere in all the time I've been in retail. But the change is dramatic in the way stores are becoming things. We have, for example, the stores and the design of, the, of, uh, of design for for, for these sort of stores. The way they've been designed is for the female customer. It is very emotional. Again, there's a lot of, lot of merchandising about. There are PCs about. There are people who can help. The people are doing orders. Just let me tell you that selling space, as I said to you before, is going down. I was within a store who told me that they're doing more sales than a year ago, but then he corrected himself. We're doing less sales than a year ago in the store but over the PCs and over the people at home ordering things on the net and collecting them from the store, they're now doing more money. So again, this is a change. So within the design here, they've made this store very, very emotional. It's also visual uh, merchandising, of course, but still all part of the overall design of the store to make this store look uh, attractive. This is another uh, store. Again, uh, this is new. This is uh, in the old time reasoning, people would never have done that again. But again, they want to make it continue refill. Uh, people there to help them. Um, this is uh, a way that uh, uh, an emotional proposition that when people go in, and people don't stay, they just don't, um, even the Germans, and the Germans don't like shopping. They, they like to do everything quick with the Germans. And, Schnell. In this week, Germany, they do everything schnell. They want to do everything quickly. But now, people are now spending, and I think in the future, people are going to spend more time in stores than anything else. But the world is getting colder, if you like, because of the internet and you all that things come. So when you go into a store tomorrow, it's got to reflect the warmth. Of, of, uh, of, of, and it, it's got to be somewhere which is very nice to go in. 
unless you're going through your foods like Walmart or Aldi. Again, we come to the Apple Store, we saw some very good photographs, but this is, uh, this is in London. Um, this is absolutely to perfection. Ken was saying today that was, the average purchase was $900, I think, wasn't it, Ken? Um, the amount of money they're taking, but this is also retail, isn't it? But what a philosophy. You know, and I, I often think today, gosh, what opportunities there are for people today if they can really create the right concept, the right design. And when you go in that store, you can really say, wow, it really is something quite exceptional. Look at it, the highest sales per square meter in the world. And it's not, it's not fluffy, it's a different concept. But can we not learn from people like Apple? I believe, yes, we can. But this is also has to do with uh, brand specifically. Or it has, it also has to do with store design. Of course, yeah, of course. It's the brand. It's the brand. It's the whole whole philosophy. Yeah. So this store design is all part of the whole brand. This is why I've spoke to you in, in making a broader field. When you're talking about design, you can't say I'm going to design the store. It is the whole philosophy. And design is only one part of it. You can't do a design of the store without the philosophy behind it and the way they're doing it. But where is the merchandise? Look at that. The selling, the best selling square meter in the whole world. You go see a merchandise. Or you can do a set it, put in the back and bring it out and what have you. So, yeah, I think it is creating a brand. Where is the tangibility? Sorry? We are talking about simple things like the experience and you mentioned one point. Yeah. You must see at the store in totality and uh, uh, look for the long term experience from your store design. Yes. Yes. So how do we I mean I think it is purely, you know, uh, all the assumptions that the design is gonna work or it may not work, like an accountant told you. Yes. Whether it's gonna be meaningful or not. Yeah. You know, when it comes to design, the way I feel, I mean, there are people who disagree with you, but the people I've been a, uh, been a success have had a feeling for what they're doing it. Now, there was no best examples of this beforehand that created this there. So I think what every company has got to do is to create a concept or create it through their listening to what the customer's saying, looking at what the competitor's doing, being different. And this is totally different from anything else I've ever seen. You couldn't get that from experience, but this is how it developed. It's all part of the brand. So, you know, the, I'm sure that uh, Steve Jobs had much to do, um, your present guy, with the store design. Uh, they were all part of it. The store design is not just for the store designer. The store, de store design is for the whole company. So, and this is what they've created, and something quite exceptional. So I'm talking about it, Ken's talking about it, the world is going to shop there, it's getting more and more successful. So, you know, it obviously works. Ken also and there are other companies like that too, IKEA I've mentioned. Yeah. Ken also spoke about use your subconscious before you design the store. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, probably this all entire experience of the, the throughput, as you say, first five meter, it is also has to do with not many other things as well. You're saying it is has, has to have the totality to come into picture. Yeah. I can only share the experience with you about this. We had a 12,000 square meter store, the highest sales in Germany at the time, I'm now talking about 1983. And everybody came, the whole store, all the other stores were empty, but our store was full. It was voted one of the world's stores. And then we improved it. And then I had the vision with other people and said, well, we want to create something very exceptional. We're gonna have this zoo. And so we got it. When you come in, you almost thought you had to pay to go into it, it was so nice. The accountant nearly had a heart attack because he thought it was cost too much money. But it was all part, so it's very difficult. What I'm saying, and I think this is more today, that we were creating a, a world that people hadn't been to before, and that people came to our store because it was exciting, because they saw something different. So I think this is the advantage of, um, this just comes out of the experience about living and breathing the brand. And I think that a design person 
uh, if I had a design manager today and I was the CEO, I'd live and breathe my thoughts with him, I'd invite him for lunch, I'd take him, I'd let him know my philosophy, I want to hear his. I think it's so important that what I'm thinking or what we are thinking is also transmitted in here. And I'm sure this, is, this wasn't one person. This was a, a, a team effort to, to, to get that score. But I mean, I, this to me is the pinnacle, the absolute pinnacle of story in life. Ken? Yeah, John, just as a, a funny side note, I, I talked to the person who designs the Apple stores, and they said that you know, you've never seen an Apple store like this unless it's closed. Um, because you never can see what an Apple store looks like when it's full of people. And he said his job was to design uh, the space between the people, not to design uh, for people to be in the spaces between the store. So he actually figured, looked at the store and said the, the store environment is uh, about creating calmness and order among the chaos of the uh, customers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when you talk about designing an experience, he started from a customer experience and then uh, created the store that existed within a customer experience, didn't design an environment, hoped that people would, would like it and kind of work backwards. Uh, but it was a very interesting, uh, different yeah. approach. That's right, yeah. So I, I think coming back to, to what, we, what Ken said, I think you've got to see that the whole totality of the store, that is very, very important, and not just segments of it, and what philosophy and what are you going to do, and how are you going to promote it, what are you going to say? How are you going to be different for your com uh, from your competitors, etc.? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't need my son to help me on that, do I? I just take a bottle of. Good. Again, this is another fine example of, uh, uh, as Ken was saying, to go into a. Uh, I went in California, no, Las Vegas, and I went into a store, an Apple store, and you wouldn't you wouldn't recognise it because all you saw was. Uh, thousands of people and lots and lots and lots of uh, very motivated associates with their PCs. You almost have to, I went into a store for an Apple uh, iPod, you almost have to bake, bake for it. You know, can I please, uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, and they say, well, we'll write your name down, Mr. I'm sure it was all marketing, I don't know, probably marketing, but anyway. Of course I left Las Vegas and I got a card saying it was there, but I'd this, already gone. This is what they do, you know, they create the hype. Yeah. Uh, so I also talked about this actually. I mentioned Apple also in my uh, my uh, my session, where how they were creating the hype with the iPhone 5 that was coming up, or with the iPad, and with yeah. that. So they had people lining up in their store for hours and for days. Actually, they bring their sleeping bags because yeah. they want the latest other product. It's all about creating that hype, that's right. and the full con that's part of the concept of the store, which will yeah. all obviously go together. That's right. so if I want to buy one now in Germany, I can't. But the store will full of them. But who wants anyone? Or, well, I think it's all, but it's part of it. But what I'm saying, if they can create something like that within theirs, look at the opportunities of creating something. And I'm going to show you some more examples now. Of, of, oh, this is Nike. Nike. Uh, I mean, the image of Nike. I heard the other day one was going down. Puma, Puma. But Nike is just absolutely phenomenal in the way of their store design and their marketing. But store design follows the marketing and everything else. But they've, they've now got, look on the internet, wow. Look on the internet for that. <coughs> it is called the Nikel fuel, fuel station. Anybody seen it? Yeah? But when you go in, you go down the corridor, your images are there through a, uh, 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 with a photo scan, you go there, then suddenly you see these, this gold, this gold, these shoes, yeah? Yeah, the images they created through their store design. And, and yet, they can order through it, and you've got the PCs, you've got everything there, but this is really a store that, that one has got to see, because all the people can show you everything, you just click onto a shoe, it tells you everything, it shows you everything, and you see all these, go it's a little bit like Apple in many ways, because there are not thousands of them. You say, I want that, and then somebody shoots off, clicks something, and then somebody runs up and gives you a pair. So you must have an enormous warehouse, but here, you don't see much merchandise, you just see, these beautiful gold, sh not gold of course, but the, the, the shoes, yeah? But the way they've designed that store to create that emotion is just absolutely amazing. Pity I can't show you the, 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 the video. It's called Box Park, the way it is. It's in, uh, it's in London, South East London. And uh, the way it's been done, it's in a, 
an old shopping area, and uh, it's just phenomenally successful. Again, lucky. Apple did something different, IKEA doing something different, Box Park are doing different, and I've seen small heroes, small stores, you know, just who have also been very, very, very successful and creating a brand. Because I think retail brands are going to be the most, we, I think in the future you're going to have strong brands, but you're going to have in the future more retail brands. I don't know if the same is happening here. But everybody in Europe is looking more and more to own labels to differentiate. So I think the future is going to belong to strong brands on the one side, very strong brands like Coca-Cola, like Bosch or whatever. But on the other side, you've then got the retail brand like Burberry's and, 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 and Walmart and, and what have you. And Nike, of course, are here with this box park, uh, with this new shopping concept that they've got. This is the Nike fuel station, certainly worth, and it'll be coming here, I'm sure. These are all things, this is the first one. Uh, why they did it in London, or not, I don't know, but uh, they're going to expand with these, these type concepts all over. And I'm very sure that at the end of the day, they're going to get the highest sales per square meter in the whole of the industry. It'll be everybody else, but they're not displaying shoes, they're selling a, they're selling a message. Just another way. I'm not saying it's the only way, of course not. Uh, another concept, uh, again, which is 50,000 square meters, enormously successful in America. It beats everything around it. It is a concept called Eat Italy. It's 50, it's uh, 40, 400,000 square, yeah, sorry, four, yeah, 4,000, uh, sorry, 40,000 square meters, yeah, 40,000 square feet. Uh, and this is every Italy. All it has is Italian. The way it's been designed, the whole store, uh, very Italian in its way. But it just sells Italian goods. But again, I'm saying to you here, they've also imported Italians to work in that store, because to make to be more authentic. Again, they've designed the most wonderful store. You see this here. Uh, this is all Italian food in an experience that you've never seen before. It is buying and it is tasting, but again, you get very, very, very high sales uh, per square meter uh, with, it, with these products. Um, and a lot of traffic, and everybody talks about Eat Italy, and they're doing now a, a, a chain. But the way the whole store has been done, yeah, uh, it's, be, it's totally different. Um, the fixtures, the fitting, the everything. And of course, it is very, very Italian. It's almost like you see big stores also as a destination design, yes. almost. Yes. Like having a destination market. Yes. Like yes. designing yes. a new park for events. Yes, that's right. It says, yes. It says, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um, this is a, a clothing retailer and an accessories, and now they're going into garden. Uh, and again, Next have created a, uh, something different. Uh, they've only opened two stores, but it was a good company. It, it pays to see, we'll have to wait and see how successful it is. But again, they, the way that they've designed their stores here, uh, within the whole area here, um, again, totally different to what we have seen before, because there's not merchandise everywhere, it's more showroom. So I think again, the design of tomorrow is going to be much more towards showroom as well as showing the products there. And I think this is a, a classical example. This was a little bit like Knob or I was. And we had the highest sales per square meter, but we had more showroom than else. Other people have merchandise. Again, something to be to, to learn from. This is another area. Here again, the way they've done, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. But they've created something different. I haven't seen flooring like this uh, or a design like this. Uh, and within the garden center, when you go out in the garden center, they've created a design that wherever you walk, you're undercover. So um, you, you, don't, uh, you don't have to get wet. Most of the garden centers in England, they're open, but they don't have a roof. But these can lead you to certain areas to go. So again, they, they've brought an emotional proposition onto this one here. 
So how do people want to experience your brand? Here's the next one. We've now got to Apple again, so I won't say any more about that because I think we've said enough about that one. John, would you like to take a five minute break for coffee? Ten minute break for coffee? Yeah, I'll finish this and I'll stop and move on. Yeah. Uh, is it? Whoa. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay. I'll take this. Ah, yeah. I'm nearly at the end of this one. So this is Burberry's, the, the new Burberry store. Now, Burberry, immensely successful. It was a store. Just let me catch that more. So. Uh, so, I mean, this is Burberry. It, met, it wasn't doing so well. It was sleepy. It wasn't doing so well. And they redesigned the store. Look at it. Wow. Where's the merchandise? My wife goes in and she buys something. Every time she goes in. But you don't see a lot. But that really, really, what a, what a difference. Just by revamping their style, the store and everything. Not only really that, obviously, with the merchandise. But, uh, uh, okay. I think we'll take a break because I've seen this a little bit more and a bit more. Yeah, so maybe we'll just take a break now and have a, a coffee and a water. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Some more very good examples. Yeah.